Hello, uh, the days of isolation are almost over. Yeah, this will be day nine uh, of isolation. And as a healthcare worker, after day 10, I need, to, I need to be going to work. But uh, we are so grateful for the state of our health throughout um, this uh, isolation so far. And uh, we're very thankful for your, your prayers, your support, and uh, very, very thankful. And uh, every day we came in sharing our experiences and sharing some insight um, um, around this pandemic. And we would like to believe that we uh, we made a difference in, in any way. And here's what we would like to ask. If we made in any difference, even a small bit, would you please let us know in the comments below. And I uh, would be glad to see to see that. And um, talk about the updates. We hope all of you have signed up for that free uh, online offer that is going to be starting on the 15th. I mean, the, literally, if you haven't, you better go do it right now. Because information that we're going to be discussing are literally life and death, death, death information and uh, you don't want to miss that it's going to be for free it's going to be in the comfort of your own home i mean why wouldn't you sign up and today though we're going to be talking about happiness how does you how does your happiness influence your 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 health do you have to be happy in order to be healthy what is health anyway according to WHO, health is a state of a physical, mental, and psychological well-being, and it's not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. That is, the fact that you're not sick does not necessarily mean that you're happy. But do healthier people generally tend to be happier? Now we have a, number, a growing number of evidence showing that the positive psychological effect um, basically um, is, is associated with a reduced risk of physical illness and also prolonged survival. Uh, positive psychologi uh, psychological effects, I mean, it has, uh, you know, um, positive uh, biological response, uh, which include low cortisol levels, uh, faster cardiac recovery, decreased inflammation, and also resilience to infection. But even more intriguing is to know that this positive psychology, can it prevent uh, or protect us from the future illnesses and also inhibit the progression of, of the chronic diseases? And that's what the study found. Actually, the positive psychology can is very beneficial, not only on health people, but also in the people that are sick um, um, already. But one may argue saying that, but is it happy people, is it because that happy people tend to practice, you know, healthy behavior such as they eat healthier, they sleep enough hours, they don't drink uh, too much alcohol, they don't smoke. Well, what do things are very good um, you know, to prolong your health? Um, but they did studies where they, you know, they, they considered these factors. They still found that um, the positive psychological e effect, the benefit of it, it, still stands even when people are practicing those very behaviors. That is, they actually took a group of people, I mean, uh, two groups of people, uh, uh, drinking the same amount of alcohol, the same number of cigarettes, eating uh, the same, the same bed, the bed diet, and also, you know, depriving themselves from sleeping. But one group was happier, other group wasn't, and literally the group that, that was happy, happier practicing positive psychological behavior actually did, uh, lived longer than the group that, uh, that it did, did, didn't. And um, not only that, to do that, basically they, do, they did intervention trials, that is basically where they have to infect people to see how they respond. Uneth unethical, of course, but people were paid and that was done. Um, they actually did, um, uh, randomize a group of people, they expose them to different moods, and then uh, they infect them with the, you know, with the common cold virus, the rhinovirus, and basically a nasal drop of rhinovirus, and of course, you know that if you are from what you covered so far, having been exposed to the, to the common cold does not necessarily that you're going, to, you're going to show symptoms, but what is important, they want to see how, were, how, is, how the, the immune system were going to, uh, to respond, if the immune system can fight back from getting those common cold um, the symptoms and so on. And what they found was actually the group, um, the people that, that the, the, that practices psychological well-being, despite having been infected with the, um, uh, you know, rhinovirus, they still did better and they didn't, they didn't suffer the symptoms and the immune response responded better than the group that were gloomy and not happy. And, uh, and that study was re repeated as, as well using a flu virus. And they still found the same effects of positive psychological well-being. Well, well and um, not only that, when you think about the current situation that we're living in, 
uh, the conclusion actually was that positive psychological well-being is actually important for health than it was thought before. And I was talking, thinking to myself, maybe the wise man, Solomon, knew all this even be before the scientist could study what is going on when he says that a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a, a broken spirit dries the bone, Proverbs 17, 22. And we are living in very difficult times. Um, you know, our health are in danger. Our, our economy is nowhere. I mean, there's so much turmoil around us in the country. But maybe while all the things are going on, this may be the time to cultivate, dig in that positive psychology because our lives may be depending on it. Thank you.